Stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're delighted to have you with us today for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting in the studio to be profiled is artist Don Bacardi and actor-director Mel Johnson, Jr. You'll immediately recognize the face of Mr. Johnson. He co-starred with Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall, was a regular in David Lynch's TV comedy On the Air, and in American Blue Note. Originally, Mel Johnson was a man of the stage. Let's start there, Mel. How'd you get to Broadway? <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up in New York, uh, a New York kind of person. Uh, went to the High School of Performing Arts. And, oh, you did? Yeah, oh, yeah, all the way. All the way to New York. <laughs> And uh, actually, I started out in regional theater, and after traveling around so much, I decided I wanted to stay home. And fortunately, I sing and do a little bit of dancing, and I ended up in uh, On the 20th Century, which was my first Broadway show, star uh, directed by Hal Prince. That was your very first show? That was my first show, my I first saw, Broadway show. Did I saw that show. Oh, uh, did you? Yeah, and I loved it. Oh, I had yeah, a lot with of... the train, Madeline Kahn, Emma Jean Coca, it was great. It was, was it fun for you the first oh, time? Oh, it was, you know, I, I had no idea what it was going to be like to be in a big Broadway show like that. And uh, it, was, it was great. How young were you? God, I was just out of college uh, in my early twenties. Did you did you go to college in New yeah, York? Yeah, I went too? to Hofstra University oh, on you Long did. Island. Yeah. Is it uh, artistic as it well? It was a big uh, theater school. They had a rep, uh, uh, replica of the Globe stage. It was big Shakespeare uh, oh, school. So. so you trained classically. Tra classically trained and uh, and really never sang for my supper until I decided to stay home in New York. Even when you were at the High School of Performing Arts? High School of Performing Arts was not a big musical school. It was, oh. you know, they really wanted you to uh, do the classics, work on plays. Really? Uh, Did you dance there? Uh, no, I was in the drama department. And so the only time that we danced <coughs> and sang was when it was the student production, you know, when we put it all together oh. ourselves. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a Oh, we had movement. Oh, we had movement. I mean, you know, the, <coughs> the school was set up so that we also had body movement, as we called it, oh. voice for the stage and everything, but it was concentrated on uh, our acting. Then you did UB. Then I did UB with the Heinz brothers, Maurice and Gregory Heinz. And, and what did you do in that? Oh, we, it was a musical review. It took us way, you know, w as far away from a script as possible, but UB Blake was alive at the time. So did it he was help real. you? Oh, he helped in the fact that he kept us centered as to what we were doing. It wasn't just about riffing all over the song. He said, I like to hear the melody, you know, because that's what he wrote. He played the piano, right? He played the piano. And he didn't play during the show. He was 98 years right. old. Right. Did he compose the music that Composed you... all the music that we sang. And it was very, very exciting having him there for that process. Had you worked with the Heinz brothers before? No, that was the first time, but uh, we've remained close ever since. It's been great. So we have a real talent pool here. Oh, boy, you know, you just got to try and do it all. Then you went on to do Bob Fosse's Big Deal. Bob Fosse's was the... Am I doing them in right order? Well, no, the next one was The Rink with Liza Minnelli oh, and oh, Cheetah oh. Rivera. I think I'm saving that. Oh, uh, you're saving that one. Okay, but then the, the last show I did uh, was Bob Fosse's Big Deal. Um, I had already moved to Los Angeles at the time, had gone home for Christmas. Oh. And uh, ended up not coming back here for a year because I auditioned and ended up. Uh, doing so you one came of these. to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. auditioned for the big deal. big deal. You went back to audition. No, I went back for Christmas holiday, oh. and my agent called me and said, "Listen, uh, one of the they're uh, casting one of the leads in that show." So I auditioned, and uh, and what did you do in that? It was based on a movie, an Italian movie called Big Deal on Madonna Street, about five small-time petty thieves, <coughs> so I was one of the five guys. Oh, and, did you uh, sing, dance? Sing, sing, and uh, I was playing the ingenue. I was like way over the ingenue age, but you know, on Broadway you can do that sort of thing. 
<laughs> I, the, actually, my leading lady was 19, and I was playing 19. But um, it was great working with Fosse. Difficult man, but we had a good time. Did he teach you new dance steps? Did he do he new choreography? He used his major dancers. Oh, again, yeah. we were the, the principal five guys. We, we did, he did stage several of our musical numbers, but he had his serious Fosse dancers to do the major. He won the best choreographer, Tony, that year. Oh, and you were in the play, which happened to be great. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was, and then The Rink. The Rink with uh, La, uh, Cheetah and Liza was spectacular. And, and that's where I met Jason Alexander. And that's what led you into directing. But Cheetah, can you imagine? She, Cheetah is still dancing. Still dancing. Still kicking higher than Kiss we of the kick. Spider Woman, Tony Award winner. Just wonderful. I know. Mm -hmm. I, and, and are you still dancing? <laughs> I have danced. I have not danced as much as I did when I was back in New York because L.A. is not that kind of a town. I've done a little more singing out here than I have dancing out here. We have to give her uh, real credit as a total trooper, oh, a absolutely. real gypsy, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, and right after we did uh, The Rink, she was in a serious car accident and had her leg fractured oh in several spots. And she came back and is dancing on Broadway again. So you, Jason, I didn't know, was a singer. Oh, so yes. He sang yes. and danced he as well. He sang and danced. We all sang and danced in that one. And that was really your lead-in to directing. Well, I had done a little directing here and there. And uh, when I got out here, I directed a little uh, Equity Waiver things. And Jason and I were good friends. And so he uh, came to see one of the shows that I directed. And when he decided he wanted to do Give Him Hell Harry, uh, he asked me if I'd direct it. And I said yes. And that's uh, a one-man show. Mm -hmm. It played at the Tiffany. I Absolutely. don't know if I, I can see it going all over the world just because it is a one-man yeah, show. Yeah. It's about Harry Truman. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have a picture of what Jason looked like. Oh, the before and after. The thing. before and after where he really pulled himself into that. Yeah. Truman look. Mm -hmm. How did did you have to help him get into that look? Well, he had a very strong idea of what he wanted to look like, and of course we went over it together. And uh, he came up with it. He looked fabulous. You know the uh, the <laughs> transformation was really remarkable. And one of those, I I think we're going to see the the picture on the screen now. Mm -hmm. And one of those pictures, it looks like he's all pushed up tight, and I read that he wore a corset. No, he no. didn't wear a corset. <laughs> he just held that self. He held himself presidentially. Let's put it that way. Is that way. right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I thought that because I was going to ask you if that was part of getting him into his posture. Well, he, you know, physically, he really uh, took on the persona of, of, who he was. You know, not necessarily did he try to mimic. Uh, Truman, but you know, it was just he became Truman. Now I understand. I saw the play. Now I understand. I was going to ask you about the choreography of it because he moves all around the stage, and you mm -hmm. have him up and down. Yeah. Did you have to direct yeah. that as yeah. well? Yeah, we we staged that so he was he knew where he was going to be at every moment. And there was a a, a movement. I mean, yeah, flow. We I wanted it to flow. I really wanted it to move and ebb and flow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and since he was a dancer, you were able to get oh, him. Oh, sure, I sure. Get, I didn't understand all that. Oh, yeah. So um, was that kind of like a big break in directing for you? or? Well, in, in terms of Los Angeles, it was very good. It was high profile. And, and now I've been asked to direct several other things. And uh, so I'm going to keep things going. I still, you know, acting is still my first love. So I'll, you know, just continue to do that sort of thing. When uh, I was in Mexico, they were making, it's, it's several years ago, but they were making Total Recall. Yes. And uh, I, w I went down to cover a, a charity event, and some of the people from uh, the movie came to the event that night. And it wasn't until I've seen the movie so many times now, and then I saw you direct at as a mm -hmm. director mm -hmm. that I went, that's the face everyone knows. Oh, right. It is. It was quite a popular film and a very recognizable kind of guy I was. And a lot of people <laughs> stop and... Do you they know, stop oh, you? Oh, sure. Yeah, because it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Tell us what, what we're going to see, because we have a clip from that. Oh, well, we're probably going to see the actual opening when I first run into Arnold's character in uh, Total Recall, when he gets to Mars, when he first gets to Mars, and just a little uh, introduction into that. Okay, let's take Mel Johnson to Mars <laughs> and Total Recall. Hey man, you need a cab? Well, what's wrong with this one? <laughs> he ain't got five kids to feed. Where's yours? Right over there, man. Hey, hey man, that's my fare. Hey asshole, that's my fare. Eat this. Damn you, Benny. Welcome to Mars, man. What the hell was that? 
An accident? That's the rebels, man! Let's get out of here! Before they arrest us! Well, what do the rebels want? All the usual. More money, more freedom, more air. Take them out! Wanna feel good? Not bad, huh? Read your palm. Tell me something, are all psychics? Are... Freaks? Great soul, man. It goes with the territory. What happened to them? Cheap domes and nowhere to clean out the rays. So, this is it. The last resort. You sure you want to go in here, man? Why not? I know there's much better place down the street. The girls are cleaner. The liquor ain't watered down. Sure, and you get kickbacks. <laughs> hey, man, I got five kids to feed. Take him to the dentist. Hey, thanks, mister. Listen, I'll be waiting here for you. You just take your time. That is the name. That is. <laughs> you know, that, that you're quite a con man. <laughs> I tell you. But how long did it take you to get into to costume once you got into that role of... Well, for me, it was one of the fairly easier costume things because I didn't have to uh, do the incredible face changes uh, until specifically when I had to become, show my uh, show mutated your, uh, arm. Your mutated yeah. arm. That was quite an ordeal. I mean, pre-production, having a whole body cast, half body cast. I'd never, you know, I'd never broken a limb, so I didn't know how much uh, was entailed in getting, you know, getting together. So they, I hold half a body, my arm, my hand. How long were you in Mexico? I was down there for three months. So the first, say what, two months you were just Mel Johnson, and then you got into this body cast? Oh, or? no, 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 no. That was all pre-going down there for the three months. Oh, all it of was. That was? Yeah, I did all of that work before I went to Mexico. And for the three months in Mexico, it was shoot, 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 bang, 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 oh. run, 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 drive, drive, drive. I see. Act, act, act. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> we have a new play here. <laughs> right. Did you work with stuntmen? Did you have to work with stuntmen? Yeah, we had, they had, I had three specific stuntmen that worked with me uh, at different points during, they didn't stay the whole time because whenever something would come up that I needed a stuntman, they would bring one down. Showing you what to do or? No, they would do the, the, like the big car crash, um, and I would drive right up until then, and, then, and then I'd step out, and, and then see. they would go in and I do the see, big crash and stuff like that. I think it's just phenomenal um, to, to experience all that thing, all of that as an actor. Oh, it was wonderful, and I mean, and Arnold made it even nicer because he was really supportive and fun, and he was about, let's make this entire experience a good time. Did you learn different techniques from Arnold as well? Well, basically, uh, the first thing I learned was that the camera was going to stay on him. So <laughs> if I didn't stay next to him, I wouldn't be in the film. You learned that right away. <laughs> right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's something that we learn, too, when we're yeah. on this show. Yes. We had to, like, stick oh, together. Oh, I know. I, you know, I'm so used to the stage. And, mm. <laughs> do you miss Broadway? I miss it terribly. So uh, hopefully, eventually, I expect to go back and do a show. Would you ever think that you had to choose between directing and acting? I hope I never have to choose because I enjoy doing both and uh, uh, and I'm I don't think you have to choose. I mean, Clint Eastwood doesn't choose. He just keeps doing it. Yay, you know? Clint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yay, Mel. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. for being with us. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed having you. And don't go away because we're going to be right back with artist Don Bacardi. We have uh, a, a drawing of Christopher Isherwood on the set and you're going to see some more of Don's work when we come back. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're back with artist Don Bacardi. Don is a true Southern California native. Born in Los Angeles, he was raised in the Atwater District of Los Angeles. He attended John Marshall High School and Chouinard Art Institute, and has lived in Santa Monica with a view of the canyons and a view of the Pacific Ocean for how long, Don? I've been in this particular house uh, I'm living in now for more than 34 years. I was going to say 30 years, but I thought it couldn't be that mm -hmm. long. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. And where is the Atwater area of Atwater Los Angeles? Atwater is just beyond Silver Lake. It's between oh. Silver Lake and, and uh, Glendale. Did you always want to be an artist when you were living there? I always drew uh, um, uh, as a child. Um, it didn't really uh, occur to me to make a career out of it. I think partly because uh, 
Um, my parents never uh, encouraged me to, to be an artist. In fact, my father actively uh, did what he could to discourage me from Is it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Then how, how did you get to art school? Uh, uh, Chris, uh, uh, um, uh, he was the one who uh, not only uh, supported me in, in art school, but uh, gave me uh, the, the emotional support. Oh, is, I didn't realize that. So, oh, absolutely, So Christopher yeah. Isherwood was um, a big influence in your career. Oh, uh, he's, he's, he's uh, uh, singly responsible for, for my being an artist. Well, I remember when we talked about uh, Christopher Isherwood, and whom you've been associated with and, and lived with for... 33 years. 33, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time, maybe in the 80s, you said, I am the Christopher Isherwood portraitist. And I thought, what a great job. Uh, uh, official portraitist. <laughs> oh, yes. official. <laughs> yeah, that, and yes, it, he, he, he actually had portraits done by other people. But, uh, oh, he did? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, of course, David Hockney. Yes. Yes, and uh, uh, William Coldstream in, in, in England, and uh, uh, oh, lots of other people. But he did have have that belief in you from the very yes, beginning. Yes, you see, I, I, I was still uh, 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 drawing as I had in my childhood when, when I met him, and he saw that I had a, a, an ability and said, why don't you try art school? It hadn't really uh, uh, occurred to me, uh, as I say, because my parents hadn't encouraged me. What were you drawing at the time? Always people. Always. Never anything but people. Because I've never seen you, I've never seen anything else. I wondered if you ever drew anything else. No, even when uh, um, I was a kid, uh, um, uh, always uh, um, uh, people, either from my imagination or from uh, uh, photographs. And it wasn't, uh, actually Chris was my first uh, live model, the first time I worked from live. And then um, uh, I went to art school, and then that was all uh, working from live models. And that was the real turn on. That's what made me uh, realize that uh, that's what I wanted to do. Can portraiture change over the years, your techniques? Oh, yes, yes. My technique has, has changed uh, uh, considerably. Well, for years, I only did uh, black and white drawings. Uh -huh. Color was a relatively uh, black late and white, development for me. Like like what, just pencil? Uh, uh, pencil, ink wash, finally pen and ink, uh, uh, all ink drawings. And then uh, from that I gradually went into uh, color, first doing wash paintings, uh, acrylic washes. And then uh, 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 gradually uh, uh, going to canvas. And, and also talk about the line as you start, like this, um, drawing of me. I don't know what, what year uh, this uh, was done. Pencil and ink wash, that was 77. In 1977. Yeah. So you were still doing the black and white. You hadn't gotten into color. Oh right yes, I, I'd begun uh, uh, the color by then. Uh, uh, I was actually uh, painting in, in, in the mid-60s. I didn't show the color work until 74. Oh, that's why. Yeah. I mean, I just wasn't aware of it. Is that mm -hmm. what artists do a lot of times? They keep things in the background and wait till Yes, yes, some of them do. Uh, I can't, uh, yes, I, I, I was uncertain about the color work for a long time. And then it was Nick Wilder who said, uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, let's, let's show some, some, some of these uh, paintings the first time I showed him. I was fully prepared for him to say, well, I don't think they're ready yet, or I like the, the, the drawings better. He said, oh, no, let's, let's show the color work. So we started, I remember sitting for this, and sitting is a very disciplined uh, it's hard situation. Work. It's very hard. But drawing is even more disciplined. How do you discipline yourself and keep that, that discipline at a high? It's, it's all uh, concentration. That, to me, is the most uh, important element uh, of, of my work. And um, I have uh, uh, an ability to, to, to concentrate under all kinds of really difficult circumstances. So just... And of course, always working from life and working uh, with a lot of people who've never sat for an artist before, I have to be prepared for an awful lot of restlessness. How do you deal with that? Um, I mean, let me tell... I just work more quickly. Do you? Because I sat, I think, for three hours. I, I, you were very good. That, that was a very slow period. That, that's when I was devoting the whole of a sitting to, to, to one picture. And uh, uh, yes, that certainly took uh, 
uh, more than two hours, probably around two and a half. And, and I know that you were like, I don't think I could have swerved your mind. I couldn't have done anything to stop you. You were like so intense and like having yes. this affair with the paper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, this is really an affair with my sitter. And, and uh, I realize that I'm a kind of unconscious m mimic. Uh -huh. And the, the, the process of, of uh, uh, drawing or painting somebody is first an internal one. I realize that I'm giving a kind of performance mm. to myself. I'm trying to feel like the, 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 the person that I'm looking at. So in a way, it, it comes in, the visual thing comes inside and gets uh, 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 changed inside me, and then it comes out uh, uh, on uh, the in paper? the brush, on, on, on the, the paper. paper. This is very intricate. This piece of Christopher's is, um, what is it, ink, water? Uh, uh, that, that's acrylic uh, wash. It seems like the lines are, are, are much looser. Oh, the, oh they are. That, this, this was done very, very quickly, uh, probably in, in uh, no more than uh, 20 minutes. Is that right? Yes. And you could, well, of course, that was someone that you knew. And I know David Hockney always talked about when you know someone, you, you can work quickly and get what you want. Did, yeah. you, did you do a lot of these oh, oh, short? Uh, um, uh, uh, lots and lots of, of, of Chris. And in that uh, one sitting, I probably did uh, at least three or four. And, uh, um, and toward the end of his life, he was my only subject. And, and uh, we worked almost every day. And I sometimes did. Uh, um, a dozen or more pictures in a sitting. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And and he was a good sitter. Would he write or would he just sit for you? Uh, uh, oh, he would sit for me. Uh, uh, toward the end, uh, uh, he was sick some of the time, so uh, I couldn't uh, expect him to be a, a good sitter. And in fact, sometimes he was moving around a lot, and it just meant uh, that I worked more quickly. At the end, uh, were you doing pictures for his journals? Or were you do, doing something in particular? Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, uh, uh, except that uh, I knew that I wanted to do it. Oh, I see. I just wanted to do to be. And you see, uh, it's a way of being with somebody that is more intense than any other experience. When you're with somebody, sitting close to them and studying them mm. minutely, as I do when I work, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a very intimate experience. I don't know uh, anything like it in, in, in life. Well, don't you think, well, maybe not, because of what you're saying, the journals, his journals, or somebody's journals are just as intense as what you're talking about. Well, uh, 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 whether you're writing a journal or, or doing what I am, uh, uh, a drawing or painting of somebody, it is making a record. It's making mm -hmm. a record of, of experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, that's why I... I always work from life because for me, being an artist is, is recording an intense experience. And I don't know anything more intense than sitting with somebody for three or four hours and just looking at them. You're working on, um, are, are you translating Christopher Isherwood's last journals or his no, they're, life they're, journals? Uh, or uh, no, uh, they're, they're 12 volumes of his uh, journals and they're being uh, edited by uh, um, um, an American uh, writer and scholar, uh, Kate Bucknell. Oh, I see. And then a, um, uh, a writer named Peter Parker is writing the authorized biography of him. Are you keeping um, close watch on everything that goes on with oh, the journals? Oh, I'm, I'm very much uh, uh, involved with, with uh, both uh, the editor and, and uh, the biographer. Do you see a film coming from it? Oh, very possibly. Oh, yes, there's certainly a film uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, Chris's journals, maybe several of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, you've worked in film before, and I think maybe that's where it's getting me, to Robert Altman's shortcuts. Um, tell us how that happened and, and how you became a chronicler, really, of the movie. Well, it's never been done before. An artist uh, um, commissioned to do portraits of the cast of a movie while the movie is being filmed. Uh, uh, artist Norman Rockwell, for instance, did uh, portraits of, of uh, the cast of, of uh, several movies, but he always did them from photographs after the movie was shot. Oh. Uh, 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 with the Altman film, I was uh, uh, 
working with the actors while they were filming. And in fact, once or twice, they were called away from the sitting in order to go to the location to uh, um, appear in a scene. We have a picture, uh, a drawing, a painting, a painting of Jack Lemmon. Um, is that the size that most of them were? Yes, yes, and they were all approximately What size, size. is that? Uh, 23 by 29 inches or 22 by 30 inches. And you, were, you didn't take it home and repaint it or do anything? Oh, no, no, I, I'm peculiar in that way. I always finish everything I do at the sitting. It's, it's like a spell that's uh, broken. As soon as my sitter leaves, then, then uh, uh, my inspiration is gone. I wouldn't trust myself to make any changes. Oh, that's what's so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think the whole thing is explained by the way you say it comes in through you and out through you. And if mm -hmm. it didn't come out completely, it, it wouldn't be finished, would it? It wouldn't be finished. Uh, uh, and sometimes uh, 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 it's not finished if, if my sitter uh, 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 has to leave before I'm, I'm uh, uh, finished work, or uh, uh, if he or she faints uh, or, or falls asleep. Uh, uh, you, you were painting Divine, and Divine fell asleep. Uh, uh, Divine absolutely fell asleep, and, and uh, Divine's great dream was to be uh, uh, painted by David Hockney. So I'm, I was happy to, to arrange that. David came down and shared one of my sittings with uh, Divine. And he enjoyed himself, so he invited D Divine to sit for a painting in his studio. And, oh, uh, uh, and then he asked me, uh, would I like to come and, and share Divine as a model? So I did. And what was Divine doing, uh, uh, the great moment uh, that he'd waited for? I arrived at David's stu uh, studio, and Divine was absolutely <laughs> asleep in the sitter's chair, <laughs> sound asleep. <laughs> that is so typical, and it's so wonderful. I love these stories, and I know you could go on for hours about... And the only <laughs> thing that ra roused uh, Divine was um, uh, David's studio was near uh, uh, an outdoor uh, um, hamburger stand, <laughs> and they were frying potatoes. <laughs> And suddenly, out of this deep sleep, uh, 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 Divine uh, came to life. Said, potatoes. That was it. <laughs> and maybe we smell some potatoes too, because we're going to leave right now. <laughs> but we want to say goodbye to Tim Hilton. Goodbye, Tim. Thanks for watching, <laughs> and thanks to all of our audience for watching. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. Thank you, Don. Good. Thank you.